Hey guys, and welcome back to another chemistry video. We're going to be doing part two of our review before we really hop into this mole unit. Uh, so we're going to be talking today about naming covalent compounds and balancing. So let's hop right in here to naming covalent compounds and start with a little review of what a covalent compound is. So a covalent compound are any compounds which bond by sharing electrons. So remember, ionic steals or swaps electrons, one takes from the other covalent shares electrons. So let's look at, for example, water. Write it with proper notation here, H2O. So if I'm going to draw a Lewis diagram of water, let's start with oxygen. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six electrons, right? And that's if you just look at the periodic table, you'd see that it has should have six valence electrons based on the row it's in. Now I've got two hydrogens. Hydrogen has one valence electron. And in order for hydrogen to be happy, it wants to have two. And for oxygen to be happy, it wants to have eight. So they both want to gain an electron. Hydrogen wants to gain one, but so does oxygen. And so they're not going to be able to steal from each other because they're both trying to gain at the same time. So instead of swapping or stealing electrons, they just, they share. So they're going to share these two electrons. So now hydrogen thinks it owns both of those electrons. So hydrogen's got two and it's happy because remember hydrogen can only fit two in its outer shell because it's in the very first period of the periodic table. And if you look at oxygen, it's going to think it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's sharing all of those, so he thinks he owns it. So oxygen is happy because oxygen now thinks it's got eight electrons. So by sharing, it makes every single molecule happy. And that's why H2O bonds, because by sharing their electrons, they each think they've got a full shell. They can act like a full shell, and so that puts them in a good mood. So generally, substances that are made of two nonmetals will form a covalent bond. So we're looking over on this side of the periodic table here. I got a few of the metalloids in my circle, but that's all right. Basically, if you've got two things on this end of the table, you're ending up with a covalent bond. If you have anything from over here, it's going to be ionic instead, almost always. Now there is, as per usual with chemistry, there's always exceptions to the rules, but the vast majority of the time and all the stuff I think we're going to look at in this course, you can stick with this rule. I'm not going to throw you weird ones. So anything with two nonmetals is a covalent bond. Now, why do we care what a covalent bond is? Well, because it's got its own special naming rules. To name a covalent compound, well, we're going to keep the ordering of the elements the same, right? With an ionic, you always name the metal first and then the nonmetal. Well, it's the same rule. The element furthest left on the periodic table goes first. And you're also going to need to know some prefixes. Mono means one, di means two, tri means three, tetra means four, penta means five, hexa means six. And those prefixes tell you how many atoms of the element are in the compound. So you use the prefix to tell you how many atoms of that element are in the compound. And if you need help remembering monodi, tri, tetrapentahexa, mothers drive to the picnic hectically. Mono, di, tri, etc. Mono, di, tri, tetrapentahexa. It gives you the first letters anyways, which might be enough to kick you off on the path to the right word. Mothers drive to the picnic hectically. You can draw a picture of that. It'd be hilarious. So the only time an element does not get a prefix. So you always give them a prefix unless it's the first element and it has only one atom. Then you just leave off the mono. So for example, here I've got carbon and I've got an oxygen. So we're going to call it oxide. All right. So same rules. Name the first one first, then name the second one. Change the ending to IDE. Now we've got to put prefixes on. Carbon is the first element, and it has one atom, so I don't have to put anything on there. I can leave it as carbon. 
oxygen is not the first element. And so now I have to give it a prefix. And the prefix for one is mono. So it's carbon. You could say monoxide, but it would sound ridiculous. So we'd shorten it to make it sound nicer because you don't have the two vowels together. It's carbon monoxide. Done. It's that easy. What about this one here? Well, I see carbon and I see fluorine. Oh, I'm going to need more space in case I have to put a prefix on it. Oh, but I don't leave it as fluorine, right? You always change the second one to IDE. So it's carbon something fluoride. How many carbons do I have? Only one. All right, I can leave it off because it's the first atom. Second one, how many do I have? Four. What's the prefix for four, guys? Take a second, think about it. See if you can remember without going back. What's the prefix for four? Tetra. It's carbon tetrafluoride. That means I have one carbon and four fluorines. That's how many of the atoms I have. I would write this thing correctly. It would look like that little four underneath. Four fluorines, one carbon. All right. Number two. What do I see? I see nitrogen. Oh, that's an ugly G. And I see S, sulfur. So I change it to sulfide. All right. Now, how many nitrogens do I have? It is the first element, but it's got two. And if it's got two, I need to give it a prefix. So this is not nitrogen anymore. It's dinitrogen. How many sulfurs do I have? Well, there's no number there at all. So that means I have one sulfur. And the prefix for one is, of course, mono. So I am at dinitrogen monosulfide. Two nitrogens, one sulfur. Last one. C2H4. I'm just rewriting it so the notation looks nice. All right. I'm going to try and do this all in one shot. I have two carbons. I have dicarbon. And I've got four hydrogens. So I have tetra four hydrogens. Hydride. Changing the ending to IDE. Tetra car dicarbon tetrahydride. Perfect. We have named some covalent compounds. And going backwards from name to element is just as easy. Like if I had, I don't know, I'm just going to make something up that's not an actual compound. Try nitrogen hexachloride. Sure, why not? I don't think this could actually exist. It would have to actually be able to share electrons properly to exist. I'm just making something up here. Uh, so what do I got? Nitrogen with three of them. Chlorine hexa with six of them. There you go. I've changed my name back into my chemical formula. Super easy. All right. So that kind of wraps up our review of naming covalent compounds because they're, they're the easy ones to name if we're honest. Now let's look at balancing. So it's been a while since we've done some balancing. So let's, well, I don't know, maybe it's been a year for you guys, maybe it's been less, but let's look at the basic law behind it. The reason balancing exists is because the law of conservation of mass says that whatever mass of reactants we have entering a reaction has to equal the mass of the products at the end. Whatever I put in, that's what I get out. If I put in 30 pounds of cookie dough into my oven, that's a lot of cookies, I better get 30 pounds of cookies out, right? That's kind of the basic idea of it. Whatever I put in, that's what I get out. If you put in 30 pounds of dough and you only get out one pound of cookies, there's something seriously wrong with your oven. Or vice versa, I put in 30 pounds of dough and I get 60 pounds of cookies. Oh boy, I love that oven, but there's something wrong with it. It's breaking the laws of physics. So what goes in has to come out. Now what this means is there is an equal number of each of the atoms on both sides of a chemical reaction. So if I have five nitrogens on one side of a chemical reaction as parts of a reactant or even two reactants, then I would need that exact same number of nitrogens on the reactant side in either one or more chemicals. I just need the same number of atoms on each side. We'll look at some examples in a second that should make that a little easier to follow. But a little tip before we get started. If you see a polyatomic ion, remember, more than one thing, like a nitrate. If that nitrate appears on both sides, try not to break them apart. It'll be way easier to count how many nitrates I have 
then to count it as a single nitrogen and three oxygens. Just a little balancing tip that makes things a lot faster. Uh, there are some times when you do have to break them apart, but it's fairly rare and those tend to be very difficult to balance. That's a problem for future you in grade 12. So some examples. I tried to hand draw these using my computer, as you can probably tell, they're nice and blocky, but it's better than having all the twos and stuff in the wrong spot. So here's our example. I got example one, two, and three. Let's start with number one, it's the easiest. I got aluminum metal plus oxygen gas combines to give me aluminum oxide. All right, sweet. So let's try and balance this out. You can pick any atom to start with. Your rule of thumb is try to start with one that doesn't show up in multiple places. Like if you look at question two, I have oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. I don't want to start with oxygen. It's going to be hard to balance if it's all over the place. But in number one, I have oxygen once on both sides and I have aluminum once on both sides. So it doesn't really matter which one I start with. So I don't want to start with one that has a lot of things. It's not an issue. It helps to start with one that has a really big number. So I'm going to start here. Let's look at the oxygens. All right. I've got three, let's say I put one of these. I've got three oxygens on this side, which means I need three on this side. Well, if I put one of these, I only have two. If I put two of these, I have four. There is no way for me to get the right number of oxygens if I have one over here. So what do I do? I double it. What is two sets of three? So I have two sets of three oxygens. So that means on this side, I have six oxygens in total, right? Which means I need three sets of two to give me six oxygens. All right, oxygens are balanced. How many aluminums do I have on my reactant side? Well, I have two sets of two. So I have four aluminums, which means I need four sets of, this should be an invisible one, four sets of one aluminum, which means I have four aluminums. So this side has four aluminums, my uh, reactants, my products has four aluminums. My reactants have six oxygens, my products have six oxygens. I'm balanced. Everything is the same on both sides. So four aluminums plus three oxygens would give me two aluminum oxides. That's how this balances to make sure everything works out the same. Now, hopefully that is mostly review. You've seen that one before. We're going to look at a slightly trickier one now. C4H10. What would that be? I don't know. Butane plus oxygen gives me carbon dioxide plus water. A basic combustion reaction, right? You take a hydrocarbon, something with hydrogen and carbon in it, and you add oxygen gas, light it on fire, gives you carbon dioxide and water. All right, let's balance. I see oxygen all over the place, like we said before. I don't want to touch oxygen yet. Which one's got a high number? This one. All right, let's start here. I got one of these. That's going to give me four carbons and 10 hydrogens. All right. Four plus two or four times two gives me eight oxygens here. And five times one gives me five oxygens there for a total of 13 oxygens. All right. How do I make 13 out of sets of two? Yeah, that's an even number, right? That's not going to go into 13. 13's odd. So I'm stuck, which means I got to go way right back to my beginning. Way back. Keep erasing. Keep erasing. All the way back there. I started with one of these, and that's not going to work. One of those doesn't give me an X oxygen. So I double it. Now I've got eight. Two times four is eight carbons. 2 times 10 is 20 hydrogens, so 10 sets of 2. Now i got to look at my oxygens. 8 times 2 gives me 16 oxygens. 10 times 1 gives me 10 oxygens for a total of 26 oxygens. Now, does 26 go in to 2 evenly, or does 2 go into 26 evenly, I guess I should say? Of course it does. That means I have 13 sets of 2. 13 times 2 is 26. So I'm balanced. Eight carbons balances with eight carbons. I've got 20 hydrogens, which balances my 20 hydrogens. And oxygen's all over the map, but I've got 26 here 
and 16 and 10 give me 26 here. 26 and 26. The same number of atoms on the left as I have on the right. Life is good. All right, last one, number three. We're going to try and balance this one now. Oh, boy. Wait a second. This looks hard, but it's actually really, really simple because I have a polyatomic sulfate and a polyatomic phosphate. And look at this, a polyatomic phosphate and a polyatomic sulfate. Now, you only need brackets around it, in this case here, because I have more than one. Most of the time, you won't see the brackets around it. You're going to have to recognize that on your own. So I'm going to back it up and actually get rid of those brackets, just so you get another look at what it looks like. There we go. But I can see I got SO4 on one side and SO4 on the other. I'm going to treat the SO4 as if it's a single atom. So I got to start somewhere. Where's the biggest number I can find? I can see a three here and a two. Let's start here. I got three leads and I have two phosphates. I treat this as a single thing. So let's balance this. All right, I got three leads here. I need three leads on the other side. This is the only spot that has leads. If I've got two phosphates here, I need two phosphates on this side. All right. Now, this gives me six lithiums. So the only place I can find lithiums here, I need six lithiums, three sets of two. Now this gives me three sulfates. I'll treat this as a single group. And hey, look, earlier I ended up making three sulfates. We're done, we're balanced. Oh, I erased numbers, didn't I? Oh, six, there we go. So I've got three leads, three leads, three sulfates. Well, that was supposed to be a three, not a six. Oopsie. Three sulfates. Six lithiums, three sets of two. Six lithiums, two sets of three. And I've got two phosphates right there and two phosphates right there. We balance the whole thing. Three, two, you can put the one in if you wanted. Three, two, one, three, and you're balanced. And that's pretty much it for review, actually. Uh, most of this stuff, again, you've seen before, so it's, I think it's just gonna take some time practicing it to get used to it. And so I'm gonna throw, uh, maybe, you know, no, I'll wait till you guys are in here. We'll go through a bunch of this practice together because that'll probably be the best bet to make sure that we're all on the same page and you can ask questions if you're getting stuck. But that's it, review your covalent and your balancing and we should be good to go. So I will see you guys in a little bit. Thanks for watching.